My name is Paige Birch and I am a lecturer of sculpture here at KSU and I run the Master Craftsman program. And the Master Craftsman program is a program where students work with uh, clients based in the community to create public artworks. The program is a series of classes that students can take. Uh, the students don't have to be sculpture majors. Uh, many of them aren't. A lot of the students uh, who are in this show actually are not. You know, they're painting drawing majors, ceramics majors, illustration animation majors, but it gives them a bit of real world uh, experience and they get to learn what it's like to work with clients in the community and they get to help their professionalism a little bit. So today I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the show and the different pieces that we have in the show. And I'm going to start with our partnership with the city of Kennesaw. It's really what got us going in the first place. We started in 2017 and this uh, partnership that we have with the city has been the driving force to really get the excitement and growth of the program going. And so we started by creating a series of benches for downtown Kennesaw. And so I have maquettes of some of these benches. We've created seven in total, and I have uh, five of the different benches here with us. And so uh, the first batch that we did, two were located uh, outside of City Hall and City Hall Plaza. Uh, three more are located outside of the Southern Museum in downtown Kennesaw. And so these first two benches uh, were done by one of our students named Megan Pace. Uh, it's a courting bench and then just a standard bench. And the cool thing about these projects is each student gets to bring their unique vision and their unique way of working uh, to the process. They meet with clients, they pitch their ideas to the clients, uh, then feedback is given from the clients. Certain ideas are accepted, certain are rejected. And so that's part of the professionalism that they really get. It, it's something that's really not done in other classes. So this just helps to fill in some of their gaps in knowledge. And once a student has a design that is chosen, uh, we go and we sit down and we figure out how we're going to build the project. And that's going to allow them to put together quotes to submit to the city and the other clients. And so uh, having so many projects um, in short, such a short amount of time has really allowed the students to get a feel for it and kind of dial in what they're doing. And so we've really produced some pretty high quality artworks uh, from students because one of the cool things about it is that they get to work in materials and at scales they wouldn't be able to over the course of a normal semester. Um, students really wouldn't be able to afford the cost that it takes to make these kind of projects on their own. So the fact that they can really go uh, kind of above and beyond what they're used to is one of the really cool things for me because it allows the students to really, um, you know, push their uh, push themselves, a, you know, a little farther than they had before. And so this is just, you know, these are just some of the benches we've done. Uh, like I said, these first two benches are located outside of uh, City Hall. Uh, this bench, this is our most recent bench. Um, it was done in 2020, uh, mostly during the shutdown. And so. Uh, this one is located in Gateway Park underneath the shade structure. Uh, this one is made out of stainless steel and powder coated steel. It's the largest bench that we've done. Uh, it's nine feet long. It's about four and a half feet tall. So it's a pretty substantial piece. And then moving down the line, we have these two um, benches, which are really cool because they're the most sculptural benches that we've seen. Uh, these were created by a student named Thomas Daniel. And he's a blacksmith, so uh, he designed these folded over railroad spikes because railroad spikes are pieces that um, blacksmiths use to make a variety of different, uh, you know, tools and tools and objects. And so when we found out that we were going to be placing uh, some benches at the Southern Museum of Civil War and Locomotive History, uh, these were a really natural fit. Um, they are perfect for that location. They echo the history of the museum. So they're made out of Corten steel, which is a steel that rusts and seals itself. So they actually look like railroad spikes, and they're uh, just really cool designs that, you know, I found the perfect home for them. And then this last bench that we have, uh, this was done by a student named Brooke Ferret. It's made out of uh, powder-coated steel and stainless steel. And this bench is located um, in City Hall Plaza. 
actually in front of the spring where the city of Kennesaw was founded. So it, um, it, is, it actually has you know, a place of prominence uh, to the city. And so it's nice for us to have some work in, in really important locations. So the next project that we did for the city of Kennesaw was a, a set of custom cast iron manhole covers. And this is a project that is actually really close to my heart because I have a background in iron casting and I'd always wanted to make uh, manhole covers. I just think they're really cool objects and they're things that are overlooked, but they can really be made in an artistic manner. And so with this project, we took uh, cues from Japanese manhole covers in which each prefecture gets to design their own and they are highly stylized, very decorative, and they just take utilitarian objects and you know kind of elevate them um, past just plain boring things into really cool art objects. And so I approached the city of Kennesaw about this and they thought it was a really cool idea. And so we did the first batch in 2018 and then we did a second batch a year later. And the first batch, uh, I took my students to Sloss Furnace's National Historic Landmark in Birmingham, Alabama. And we did all the castings there. It was a field trip for them to learn more about casting. And with the first batch, uh, we did eight manhole covers and the second batch we did seven. So there are a total of 15 of these manhole covers in downtown Kennesaw. And these are actually the patterns that we used to do the castings. Uh, we did the designs, we drew them out, we you know pitched them to the city, they selected the ones they liked, and then we digitized those designs and we actually had these uh, patterns routed out of a high density foam um, with the help of the architecture department down on the Marietta campus. So we took these, we made uh, resin bonded sand molds out of them, we cast them in iron, and then as you can see from the photos, we covered them with colored epoxies. So each one has a uh, black background, and then all of the negative space is filled in with different colors. And so each one is really unique. Um, the first set is located outside of City Hall Plaza, uh, near the benches that are there. And the second set is located uh, all throughout uh, downtown uh, Kennesaw along Main Street Corridor. So another part of our collaboration with the City of Kennesaw uh, is Gateway Park. And Gateway Park is a pocket park that was started uh, late 2017-2018. Uh, and it's kind of at the you know mouth of downtown Kennesaw. Um, so if you're coming from the airport, uh, it kind of serves as an unofficial entryway into the downtown area. And so they approached us about doing several things for it. We uh, did a sign, a shade structure, a bench, and a sculptural sundial. And so the first major project that students did for this was uh, the shade structure. And it was designed by a student named Jonathan Copeland and you know a uh, class in uh, spring of 2019 uh, built the shade structure and installed it in Gateway Park. And it's made completely out of stainless steel. Uh, it fits the aesthetics to the rest of the park. Uh, it mimics kind of the sign and, and the uh, sundial. And so uh, the whole thing is about, it, it's right at 10 feet tall, it's 16 feet long, and it's about eight feet wide. So it's a pretty uh, monumental project. It's the most architectural project we've done and uh, it's just a really nice element. And later on, uh, about a year later, uh, one of the benches was added underneath it. So now, you know, it's complete with a uh, sitting arrangement. And it's, it's the last really large project that we've done with the city of Kennesaw, um, although we're talking about a couple more projects in the future. Some of the other uh, clients that we've worked with have seen what we've done and have started to approach us and we've begun to branch outside of just the working in the city of Kennesaw. And that to me is kind of a testament about, you know, the success of the program and, you know, all the hard work the students have put in. And so the first group that approached us to, um, you know, do some work outside of Kennesaw was the Ackworth Police Department. And they approached us in late 2019 about doing a memorial monument. And we started to do some designs about it. And we actually, uh, started on fabrication of the project in January of 2020. And this project became really weird because uh, about halfway through the semester is when uh, the COVID pandemic hit, we had to shut down and students were not allowed on campus. So I had to you know, finish what they had started. 
And then uh, right before installation is when all the George Floyd and racial injustice protests broke out. So this piece really kind of took on a life of its own. Um, it became an important piece for you know, a variety of reasons. And so it was, you know, it, it ended up being a piece that took way longer than it should have to get done. Uh, we installed it over the summer of uh, June 2020 and it's a really nice design. Um, you know, it, it's the most sculptural of the pieces that we've done. It looks completely different than anything else we've done. And so we had a uh, ceremony in, uh, you know, early fall uh, as a dedication for it. And uh, we made a couple of different uh, 3D printed maquettes uh, for the APD to look at so they could get a feel for the space. And we also gave them to some of the key players involved, uh, you know, the chief uh, and some of the, the people who donated money for the sculpture. And so it was really nice to just be able to have a sculpture outside of Kennesaw and again, you know, have students see the validation that people, you know, are, are wanting to come to them to design and create artwork. One of our current partnerships is with Smith Gilbert Gardens. Uh, Smith Gilbert Gardens is a botanical gardens that's located in Kennesaw and we have several projects uh, either recently completed, in progress, and that we are planning uh, for the future with them. And the first collaboration that we did with the gardens was this bike rack. Uh, we needed to start kind of small just so we could get a feel for the location and kind of work our way up in, into something larger. And so uh, this bike rack was designed by Cameron Moore. Um, it's uh, it's a really cool bike rack. It, it's very sculptural. It's not you know a standard bike rack, and it's designed to look like a leaf. And in the design drawings, you can see it was yellow. And we were told by one of the uh, garden employees that that meant it was diseased. So we changed it to green. Fun fact that I never knew. And so uh, this was recently installed uh, near the back lot in the botanical gardens. And this semester, some of my students have actually been working on uh, welded sculptures that are in a six month exhibition uh, out in the Botanical Gardens as part of their uh, larger Art Blooms exhibition. In addition to that, uh, students this semester have designed uh, some sculptural signage to go uh, at the front of Smith Gilbert Gardens. And that is going to be our largest project to date. We're gonna start that uh, this coming fall semester and it's going to bleed over uh, into the spring semester. So we're really excited to work with them and you know we're really excited to be able to work in a really large scale capacity with them. But this was just a really cool um, you know smaller sculptural project that, that we could get started with. The current project that we're working on for Master Craftsman is a collaboration with the Root House. The Root House is located in Marietta and it is dedicated to preserving uh, a building from the 1800s and uh, William Root was a merchant in Marietta. And so they came to us with a really specific request for a memorial sculpture and uh, this is a maquette of that piece. It's going to be a serial playing sculpture uh, that is meant to uh, memorialize some of the enslaved people in the area who uh, were not recorded. Uh, their names were not put in any registers, and if they were, uh, they've been lost to time. And so that's what this piece is representing. And it's going to be a really significant piece, um, you know, not only conceptually, but uh, for the community as well. And so uh, we're really excited to be working uh, with the Root House on this, and it's going to be uh, dedicated on Saturday, June 12th. Uh, the piece is going to be made out of Portin steel, and so it will rust. Uh, and it will be situated in a way so that when you're walking up, you're only going to see these really thin lines of the sheet metal, and it won't be until you get to a three-quarter or a profile view where you can see the full figure. And so to create the figure, we used some of our new technology that we have uh, in SOAD, and we actually 3D scan a uh, model. Uh, the model sometimes works with the root house, and so we had her wearing period appropriate clothing and we scanned her um, completely and then we 3D printed this maquette so that uh, people could get an understanding of what the, uh, you know, what the form would look like and we put it into uh, digital programs, we sliced it up to get the profiles that we needed to make the serial plane sculpture and so it was a really cool way for us to use some of the new technology that we've had 
Uh, this is by far the largest piece that we've scanned and uh, it picks up really, really exceptional detail. And it was cool because it allowed us to, you know, uh, take something that would have been really difficult to make otherwise, and it made it a lot easier for us um, to really, you know, realize how the how the piece was going to uh, come together with all the different uh, shapes that needed to be made from it. So we have, um, you know, a, the maquette uh, that we can 3D print. We can scale it up to any size that we need. And then we have the actual serial plane sculpture that will be located in the gardens.